Hey everybody, Nick Makes Plays here. Today I'm going to go over what I think are the top 5 best decks for ranked. Uh, these decks are, I guess, the best chances to win. In my opinion, just the best decks in the game. So, without further ado, let's start. Also, keep in mind that all these decks are in the description below. I have a link to this page. My mobile list has all my decks. So you can click that and it'll have all 5 of them uh, here at the screen just like this. Alright, here we go. First up, we have Aurelia Azir. In my opinion, the best deck in the entire game game this deck is extremely extremely potent it utilizes things that create sand soldiers like azir and empress dais with blade dance like ribbon dancer aurelia blossoming blade to do a huge damage output where you can attack multiple times a turn with the sand soldiers and the blade dance what makes this deck so strong is that it just usually i don't want to say out tiers everything but what it does seems so much faster and, and further ahead than all the other decks uh by turn like four to five it's already packing on like you know like 10 plus damage each turn you have to keep using your whole turn to defend against that every turn it can do the blade dancing and the sandstone generating on your, your turn uh even though they don't have the attack token so it just constantly puts your opponent in a state without to defend themselves and they never really get to do what their deck's trying to do because they're just so focused on defending themselves and it just never really stops because emperor's dies is a landmark and azir is just a champion with high health so it's very hard to stop those cards from existing. They just sit there on the board and you keep blade dancing over and over again. Uh, most decks can't keep up, in short. Um, it also doesn't really have a bad matchup against anything. It struggles the most against aggro because aggro can try and race it. The thing is, this deck will set up the first few turns to playing Emperor's Dias, uh, Exploring Student, Green Glade Duo, Azir. And in that time, aggro is able to apply their own pressure and kind of like start the race ahead of them to kill the enemy Nexus. And then they're on the defense, which isn't what they want to do. They want to be on the on the, the offense, put on the pressure. Uh, Thresh Gnosis is decent against this deck because uh, they get slays each time they block the Blades and the Sand Soldiers, and then they can play like Thresh or Gnosis and stuff like that, uh, as well as having tons of blockers with decent health, like Mercis Hunter, Escape Abomination. But the thing is, in that matchup, you have card called Homecoming. Homecoming called an ally unit or landmark to call an enemy unit or landmark, so you can just recall their, like, their Gnosis or Thresh or whatever, and then just kill them through it. Green Glade Duel is also very hard to stop the deck if they don't draw a Vile Feast or if you have protection through Nopify and Shapestone. When you summon an ally, give me plus one, plus zero this round, so Lusu can easily get to like 10 plus attack. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, this deck just has a very hard strategy to deal with because cards like Withering Whale and stuff like that normally are good against these aggressive strategies like Discard Aggro and stuff like that. But this one's different. Instead of being more aggressive, it's more of a combo deck. It sets up with the Dias and the Azir. But since Withering Whale only stops these temporarily generated Sand Soldiers, doesn't actually stop the Source, the Azir, the Dias. You, if they Withering Whale to stop your like your Blade Dance, you just keep you just do it again, and then they can't beat it. In short, uh, this deck is very hard to beat. It outclasses most things due to just its insane pressure and can kill opponents before their strategy gets going. Um, and then cards like Sparring Student and Homecoming are good against the counters, where Homecoming can recall like threats again, like Gnosis the Thresh. And Sparring Student gets huge health. We need someone to get plus one plus one. So even if you're against aggro, uh, as long as you summon enough units with like sparring student and dune keeper, dune keeper uses sand soldier to block with against aggro. This will end up having three or four health depending on the units you play, and then the, that can usually be enough health to ruin an opponent's attack. Where if they try to attack you, you just block a sparring student and they they lose their board. So uh, overall, just the best deck, uh, hard to beat, good matchup against just about everything, and the matchups that are bad or like losing are extremely slightly losing and like not really bad <laughs> so well-rounded spread just favored or even into most matchups all right that's the best deck in the entire game let's go to the next one the next best deck in the entire game is trundle lasandra trundle lasandra is a very interesting deck to say is the second best deck in the game but let's go into why so the first thing i want to know about this deck is that it it has the worst matchup against the one we just shown aurelia azir uh aurelia azir destroys this deck it's it's straight up its worst matchup um with that being said you may be thinking okay well if this deck gets destroyed by Aurelia Azir, that's the best deck and really popular, like how is this the second best deck? The reason why is this deck beats everything else in the basically entire game. There are almost no decks that beat this. I guess like notably there's like uh, Aurelia Azir obviously, then like Overwhelm is de decent against it, Deep's decent against it, Lee Sin's decent against it, but Lee Sin also loses Aurelia Azir, so it's not very popular. Point is, this deck beats all the other mechs. It beats Shivana Aesol extremely definitively, it beats Nasus Thresh extremely definitively, it beats just about everything definitively. So what this deck does is... I'm going to click here. Okay, so you level up with Sandra. You basically just stall with board clears the entire game. And on turn 8, uh, you try and get the Watcher. So 
when when Asandra is leveled to level her, you need to play two eight plus cost units. I'll explain how you did it in a second. Uh, I cost zero if you summon four plus allies that cost eight plus this game. Attack, obliterate the enemy deck. In this game, if you deck out, you lose. So you attack, and then next turn they just draw, try to draw. They have no cards, and they instantly lose. It's, just, it's basically instant one button. Um, all right, so no no deck really can deal with this, uh, and I'll explain why. Let's go back to the, the entire the entire deck. All right, so next pack with board clears, right? You got you got the box, you got withering whale, you got avalanche, you got blighted ravine, you even got the vile feast. Like you got everything, right? Like you're not gonna die. Uh, then Trundle gives you an ice pillar. So eight mana, zero six. Player fill eight mana. So basically, you play it just. To, it's it's a card that costs eight mana or fills your mana, and then you just use this to like count towards leveling Asandra. What you do is you play the ice pillar, then you can copy with fading memories uh, and play another one. Lissandra's leveled, and then you can play Spectral Matron. Uh, this card eight mana also, so works towards the Watcher. Pick an ally in hand, some exact copy of it. It's e ephemeral. You just use these to play either the Watcher from your hand is usually what you do. You just cheat the Watcher out before it's a. Uh, for even four to four, you can just have the Watcher and just cheat her into play with right with the Spectral Major and attack. Enemy loses the Blitz Enemy deck and then they lose. Um, this deck extremely hard to interact with because the entire time you try to pressure them in the early game, they just use all these board clears and stay alive. Turn eight, they play this combo, but the issue is that if you try and stop the Watcher, like let's say you like try and silence it with Hush or like stun it, then they just play another one because the first one they play off the Spectral Major is a copy, so they still have the real one in their hand. Then they just play the real one. So you have to have another answer, which is already hard to answer because it's 11 17. So you have to have very specific cards. Again, like a stun, which not everything runs, and like a silence, which not everything runs. Then if they do that, they can fading memories for another one. So it gets to the point where they just stall and, and kind of like accumulate a hand of being able to play like three plus watchers. And even if you answer the first watcher, which it just already usually don't, like you should usually don't answer the first watcher, but let's say you do. Then they play a second watcher and it's like, okay, I'll answer that one. They play Fading Memories and pay a third watcher, delete your deck, and then you lose. Uh, very hard to deal with. Like, they almost always make the turn eight. It's extremely hard to uh, stop this because they have all these board clears. They run three and treat. So it's a pretty consistent deck to always have your champions, Lissandra and the Trundle. Um, they run one Spirit Journey, kill a unit, then revive it. So this could also be used kind of like Fading Memories, where if, like, let's say they go to Hush a Watcher or like stun it, you can just spirit journey it and then it kills itself and then reborns and you attack and then you win. All you have to do is get one watcher attack and you win. So it's just not many points of interaction against this deck and it has a good matchup against almost every deck in the game because no late game beats this. Like think about the other late game uh, things in the game like the Dreadway or like the Leviathan, uh, Karina, just all, all kinds of stuff, right? Those aren't instant wins. Like if you delete your opponent's deck, you instantly win the game. But the other cards give your opponent like a chance to come back. Like you can, you can silence Leviathan and then you actually have a chance to win. Like, they deal damage. It takes time to, like, uh, put the win. So, yeah, it just... Uh, also, oh, this is well, also a very important reason why this deck is second best. So, really, is the best deck, right? And it, it's pretty good against a lot of these matchups, right? Like, versus Draven Ezreal, Aurelia Zeer's slight favored. Um, against Nasus Thrash, it's slight unfavored, but, like, pretty good. You know, versus Shivana Asa, it's, like, even or slight favored. This deck, is its strategy is so linear and so polarizing... The matchups it wins aren't like close. It, it just destroys them. It's like 60 40 in this next favor. Like it, it pretty much doesn't lose to anything that isn't a hard counter. So this deck's just able to reliably win every single matchup except for like the Aurelia Azir and the other ones that aren't really popular. Uh, whereas like Aurelia Azir can sometimes lose to like Thresh Gnosis and you know occasionally lose to Shivana. Uh, it's just, it's also not as consistent because this deck has eight turns to get to what you want with three entreats. Whereas like Aurelia Azir is very reliant on Azir. Uh, a lot of the time, it depends on your hand, but there's more interaction points against Aurelia Azir than this. So point is, this is the second best deck in the game. It pretty beats everything except for things directly built to counter it. It is the least interactable deck in the game. Like, there's not much you can do to stop it. Um, and it's just, it's definitive winning matchups against most of the field makes it second best. All right, let's go to the next deck. Next, we have Nasus Thresh, one of my favorites, actually. Uh, I hit rank one with this last season. I'm a big fan of it, so pretty excited to talk about it. This deck is very well-rounded, and what I, by that I mean it has a strong early game, a strong mid game, and a strong end game, and its matchup spreads aren't that bad. Its worst matchup is the Trundle Sandra, but that one's pretty bad. You lose that one. But outside of that one, it actually does better against Aurelia Zero than most decks. 
Uh, it goes like even ish, or like maybe even slight winning, something slight losing, and Shawana Aso, but it's doable. Like, pretty much every matchup this deck, except for Chono Sandra, is doable, and even Chono Sandra is somewhat doable. Like, you can still win. Uh, so here's why. The deck has very strong openings with the Shadow All cards. You can play Kyrie for in turn one, when you slay a unit, grab me plus one, plus zero. Then the Curse Keeper, uh, last rest on Escape Abomination, plus Ravenous Butcher, is huge damage output in the early game that can win you the game on the spot uh, if your opponent just can't deal with that pressure on turn two or whatever. And you have a lot of cards that do similar things. Like, let's say you don't open Curse Keeper, Butcher, but you open uh, Bakai Reaper, Doom Keeper, Butcher, or Bakai Reaper, uh, Fading Icon, Butcher, or just, or just Fading Icon, Butcher without the, without the Doom Keeper. You have just tons of different ways to open pretty good early game damage that your opponent immediately has to be defending against. Then the mid game, you have a lot of refuel, so like you expend your hand in the early game just to like get the huge damage. Then you're like running out of cards, you have Spirit Leech, kill an alley to draw two. You have Glimpse Beyond, kill an alley to draw two to refuel. Uh, and then your Merciless Hunters are also very good, generically. Three mana, four, three, fearsome. Uh, play, grant an enemy vulnerable. Uh, so yeah, the mid game you get Thresh. Thresh like starts thinking things die, which can get Nas out of your deck when he's leveled. So you have this solid mid game where you're just like, have a bunch of units that are good stats, you're pretty explosive, you can refuel. You have Black Spear, deal with threats. And then the end game, did you play a huge Gnosis? I have plus one, plus one for each unit you slain this round. I'm sorry, this game. Uh, fearsome. And then when he levels up, he gets Spell Shield. He gets Spell Shield levels up. So when he strikes for 10 plus damage, which is easy to get in this deck, because you do so many slays, it's easy to get him to plus uh, 10, 10 or better. And then you get Spell Shield. So now when you, you want to go for your lethal by using Atrocity on him, he's very hard to deal with because he has protection built in. So um, Atrocity, kill an ally deal damage equal to its power to anything. So this is how you finish the game. Is, you play a level up Gnosis. Sometimes a level up Gnosis without Atrocity usually just wins the game. It's very hard to deal with for most decks. But if they're staying alive or you really want to close the game or somehow they have a way around Gnosis, you can just Atrocity it and Flame Semi Nexus and deal 10 plus damage. You can even give the 20 attack in certain games and deal 20 damage in one Atrocity. So again, strong early game, strong mid game, strong end game. So yeah, it's just consistent, well rounded. You even have the two right of the callings. These can activate Curse Keeper as well as uh, just killing an ally or destroy one of your man gems, draw champions. You reliably have your champions. It's consistent. It's it's a good deck. Um, it has a chance against everything. There's not like a deck that just like destroys it. It is weak to touch and it loses Eternal Sandra a bit. Besides that, it's it's pretty well rounded. Like it destroys aggro because like it does what aggro does kind of, where it can have these strong openings, but then it also still has like a more reliable mid game, more reliable end game against decks with a lot of removal. Like as Draven, they have the refuel with the, the glimpse and the spear leech. So. It's just a, uh, it's just a good, it's just a good strategy. You just go well around the deck. So this is the third best deck in the game, in my opinion. Next, for the fourth best deck in the game, we have Shivana Aurelian Soul. So this deck is pretty good. Shivana is actually quite decent against uh, the Aurelia Azir decks, and the Hush is really good against Nasus Thresh. You can even run three Hush if you really want to have a good chance against Nasus Thresh. It has all the tools to do well. It, it, it's worst matchup is Trundle Sandra. It actually just can't win. There's no way it can win. Even if you have a Hush or like the Fangs gives you Equinox to Crest Strike, again, they, they always have multiple Watchers and you just lose. But outside of Trundle Sandra, it has the tools to, to keep up with the other two decks as well as rest decks in the meta. Um, it's very well rounded. Can Surge Strike and Hush give you answers to threats, single combat answer to threats. Sharp Sight is good um, just universally for combat tricks and hard to deal with. You can card deal with Lucid and stuff. Uh, it has challengers such as. Dragon Girl Lieutenant and Lauren Protege. It has healing through Slayer Sunforger and the Fangs. And uh, we also have Screech Dragon Challengers. Um, it has an extremely strong late game. You Eclipse Dragon on turn 7, which discounts X Dragon or Celestial you play. And you play Rallying Soul on turn 8. Getting him out two turns early is extremely powerful in the late game. So this actually has a solid early game, mid game, and late game. And then things like Dragon Chow. You play Dragon Chow, it says uh, 1 mana 0 3, and you play a dragon, it strikes me, you draw 1. If you play that and then you play Shivana to kill it, it lets Shivana get leveled faster, gives her plus one, plus one, which is kind of like a high early type thing. So if you open a, a strong opening with Dragon Shell Shivana, it just kind of is hard for most decks to beat. Um, this deck is also kind of well-rounded like Nasus Thresh, where it has this strong uh, mid game and strong late game. It's early game's not as great, but Dragon Ball Lieutenant is good to deal with things like Starring Student, uh, Green Blade Duo, Bakai Reaper. Blue Sentinel, Last Breath Summon a Crest of Insight. So it's, he plays on two, if it were to die, like you trade so you block a, a Butcher or whatever, or a Fading Icon, if they attack. You just actually manage next round. So you're able to play uh, Shivana on turn three, or Slayer Sun Forge or the Fangs and stuff like that. So it's pretty good. It's, it's somewhat consistent. You have Dragon's Clutch to hopefully search the Eclipse Dragon and Aurelian Soul. 
it's just a well rounded deck with tons of answers to different stuff. Um, having access to Hush and the concerns here on combat removal spell is just, yeah, it gets well rounded. Uh, it struggles more than Alice Thresh in the early game, as I said. But as strong as early Souls in the late game, most decks just can't deal with this. Like, all the healing and the challengers make it so that you're reliably getting to the late game. And then you can play the Aurelian Soul, which gives you a strong Celestial Invoke. Uh, you get one every turn. And then he also, when he levels, uh, they all cost zero. So all your, you just basically win the game when he levels up, which is pretty easy to do as well. Because all you have so much uh, good, well stated units, well attacked units. So if you're playing it's like a random deck on ladder or just like anything, you're just kind of hard to beat because you have a stronger late game and a stronger mid game. All you do is make it past the early game. And even if you don't have the stronger early game, you have the healing. So yeah, very well on the deck. Uh, extremely good across the board. Loses to Trundle Sandra, but can definitely beat Nasus Thrash, can do well against Rally Azir, and does amazing versus just generically all the decks in the meta. All right, last but not least, we have Ez Draven, Ezreal Draven. This deck has been around for a long time. Uh, the reason it's so good is it has so many removal spells that are equipped to dealing with all kinds of scenarios uh, that level up Ezreal in the deck. So we have Ezreal here, right? He levels up the target enemy six plus times. So the whole time you're able to just do these removal spells and then you level up your, you're leveling up towards your win con Ezreal to do tons of damage in one turn he's brought in generals to create mystic shots and remove things uh captain farron's good as a, a win con to finish off the game he may eight overwhelm create your estimates in hand you have stuns to deal with things you have refuel with some dredger refuel medic turn blister bot you get the card advantage draven you can start his axes um just having answers to finish the entire meta is super hard to deal with and most of your hands consist of many removal spells, so you don't need a crazy hand to win. Like, you can just have a normal hand and, and have a good shot against just about anything. There's not really many things that just straight up beat this besides Trumbull Lissandra. Uh, Calling Strike is very strong against Azir, and you can use against Aurelia and stuff like that. So this card is uh, very good against the Aurelia Azir. You can use it on Thresh, which is good against Nasus Thresh. Uh, it's just a well the deck that can open all kinds of different hands and do well. And it also has a high roll potential, and by that I mean... A, you draw this card and you're probably gonna win. Uh, so we have a card here, Tribeam and Probulator. I don't know if you guys can see this, I'll just read it. Uh, four mana, slow, deal one to a unit, summon a random one cost follower. While I'm in your hand, increase both by one when you play a three cost card. So when you play a three cost card, it goes to like deal two to a unit, summon a two cost follower. You play another one, it goes three to a unit, deal three cost follower. That card is insane. This card is absolutely insane in this deck. You have so many three costs. You're able to get huge value. You, you'll eventually get a four cost card that just like deals six or seven to something and then summons a six or seven cost, which is so much value for one card. So it's not only a well-rounded deck that can deal with all kinds of threats. It's a deck that also has a card where if you draw it in the early game, you just high roll people and you just win because like you get this crazy tri beam and it's just so much value you pretty much can't lose. Uh, so yeah, this deck is just very, very good against most of the meta. It's in a chance against just about everything. Um, and it has a card that can just win the game. So it's similar to what the other decks do, I guess, where like, it's well-rounded. I guess like Nasus Thresh, uh, Shivana Aesol, and this deck have the well-rounded thing going for them, but they're all a bit different. This one's more spell-based, and that one's more unit-based. Yeah, these are these are pretty, the five best decks in the game for this patch. These should be extremely powerful. Can all get you to Master's rank. They can all get you to rank one. No matter what rank you are, these decks are uh, very powerful. You can pick your battles. Like you're playing against a lot of Aurelia Zier. Maybe don't play Tron Lissandra as much. Play like Nasus Thresh. If you're not playing it's really easy and you're playing versus like everything else just play Tron Sandra and like beat everything uh so take your pick i hope one of these decks helped you out i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, if you have any questions or comments below about the decks feel free to let me know i also have guides on most of these decks so feel free to check those out as well and i'll catch you guys next time peace